Hey, Tim Sykes here. Got to go over all these hot plays. There's so much, and so many of you are asking questions. I'm sorry I'm behind. I'm actually in Asia for the next few days uh, with Pencils of Promise, which is a charity that my charity foundation, the Timothy Sykes Foundation, is working with, and we're building schools in third world countries. So I don't have the best Wi-Fi um, when I'm out here in Southeast Asia, and I'm sorry that I'm releasing these video lessons at random times, but it's literally whenever I can, and I'm trying to put in a little sleep get in a little sleep in between uh, trading and trying to stay up all night for the markets and then spending time with the kids in these charities during the day. It's a lot. But right now, DRYS is the single hottest play. Congratulations to so many of you who bought this and you're up and you've locked in 5 10 20 30 40 50 60 dollars a share in profits there's so many of you to congratulate and I do have to apologize to those shorts um, you know I get a little too aggressive sometimes with my rules I don't want anybody losing money um, I try and pass down these rules and lessons that I've learned over the years and I I have to go about it a little bit better you know so that those of you who are shorting and getting uh, you know hurt don't feel that I'm like attacking you. I'm trying to protect you. I'm trying to save you and I'm trying to help you. And it's, uh, it's my bad. You know, I need to take a better approach. Uh, first, I need to get to some housekeeping. We also did this free webinar, uh, which is pretty crazy. Um, even with all this Wi-Fi, uh, Wi-Fi issues and time zone issues last night, the replay is available. If you go to timothysykes.com slash 2016 webinar, let me scroll this down so you can see the link. TimothySykes.com slash 2016-webinar. And I'll also post the link just below. But it's a 100% free webinar all about how I've adapted to this new market. Um, and I think it's very important for you to watch. Also, we have our 30, 40, 50, 60, 70% off sales for the holidays on newsletters and DVDs. So enjoy them. This is just going to happen uh, for the next few days only. So grab it. It's so good to save money when you're investing in your education. Um, Thirdly, I got to talk about my students. So many of you guys are nailing it. I love this tweet from Van Ryan. Uh, he says, if you listen to your mentor and follow his instructions, you will learn a lot of valuable lessons and make a lot of money, Timothy Sykes. Thank you, Van Ryan. And it's not just about the money and it's not just about listening to me. It's about learning and adapting. And this is awesome. Um, you can see his little buys right here. Um, you know, and he bought some, uh, well, he's all over the place, but 403 and out at 455 on average because he sold some at 390, he took a small loss, but then he held half his position and he sold at 510. The beautiful thing about DRYS is that it creates sympathy plays. And I go over this at length in my How to Make Millions DVD and in my Spike Ability DVD, which you should be watching if you want to learn how to play hot sectors like this. Um, SHIP has now spiked from the twos to the fives. Another one is TOPS, which some of you nailed. The threes to the sixes. Uh, what was another one? EGLE uh, from the fours all the way up to the tens, which is crazy. Uh, what was the other one? There's too many. SINO, wow. I, I can't believe this just keeps going. I know a lot of people uh, who are banking there. Mark Crook had the buy alert in the challenge chat room uh, in the 160s, and this one just keeps going. Uh, SAEX is another one that, that is now spiking a little bit. Uh, what was the other one? Oh, DSX uh, is spiking too. I actually picked the one loser of the group. GNRT did not spike. Pre-market, it did get to the 490s, but it could not hold it. And I was, I was in this trying to you know profit. I was in, in the 440s a few times, uh, thinking that it would break this multi-day resistance here in the 460s. And it did. I just wasn't around to capture that. That was, that was way, way, way uh, too early for me <laughs> or too late. I think I don't even remember, but I wasn't around, uh, to capture this in the four nineties. Congratulations to those of you who did. I cut losses and this is part of what I want to teach. You know, people are saying, Tim, but you lost. Yes. But what did I lose? I lost a few cents a share. I lost like 200 bucks. It's better to lose on safe plays than those people who are shorting on DRYS. I know a lot of people who are short in the twenties, thirties, forties, and they, absolutely got crushed. I mean, it goes up to 100. So I don't like risking losing, you know, 100% on my money with GNRT. Yes, I was wrong. I accept it. I picked the, the turd of the bunch. You know, it happens sometimes with my time zone, with my scheduling. And just frankly, I just 
played it overly safe. I, I did not want to trade the crazy volatile stocks because I wasn't sure about my whole situation and I didn't make money. That's it. It's not the end of the world. I'm still up on the month. I'm still up on the year. I'm still up on the decade. I try to think about every single trade leading to something. And this one, it led to a small loss. And sometimes a small loss is okay. It's not the end of the world. Also, oh, GLBS, I forgot. Uh, this is another one. So DRYS spiking, you have to look for sympathy plays. Stocks that are in the same sector or related sectors that are low priced and can spike because now they look so cheap compared to you know, the big boy DRYS. And I would not be chasing DRYS here from the long side. Um, this is best case scenario, okay? And I said it looked toppy in the morning at 61 and then I lost, promptly lost Wi-Fi. Um, I would not be chasing it anywhere up here. This is the best case scenario for longs. This is the worst case scenario for shorts. Um, but I also have to correct some people. Some people say like, I've never seen anything like it. This will never happen again. Guys, it, it happens every few years. I mean, AQXP went from two to 55. Uh, PBMD, well, you know, this one went from 50 cents to six bucks. So not quite as much, but I know a lot of people who underestimated that too. So do me a favor and don't come in saying, you know, okay, DRYS, a long-term chart is terrible. It can never spike because that opens the door to getting squeezed like this. And I said this in yesterday's video lesson. I said this in yesterday's watch list. Like I would not be long or short overnight and shorts got absolutely crushed in here. And I hate that. And it looks like they might even spike again tomorrow. So just be careful. Anything can happen in these markets. We're in very volatile times. Be safe. Safety first. Uh, but anyways, Van Ryan, good job on SHIP playing the sympathy. Uh, here's Kael Kaali. I can't pronounce your name. I'm sorry. Uh, and he traded uh, TOPS twice, making 559. Uh, Richard bought CINO. This was another sympathy play, made 89 bucks. NV made a few hundred on DRYS. Uh, L Sanchez made a quick 560 on tops and then 3,400 on ship. Awesome job, L Sanchez. You can't take a picture, but you made four grand in a day, so congrats. Um, here's Iggy. I love seeing this. He's making money on DRYS and SINO. Um, 2,000 bucks. Awesome job, Iggy. Uh, Frank, this is a great trade. Let me just show you this because he posts screenshots too. And look at this. He's buying. 300 shares at 410, gets it at 409, and he sells it at 595 same day, okay? This is making 50% on your money in one day. So those of you who hate on penny stocks, I want you to take a good look at this screenshot and all these other screenshots. I have so many students to congratulate. I actually uh, tweeted this. I said, I have over 100 students uh, who made money on DRYS and the sympathy plays. So this is just a small sampling. Um, I don't want to overwhelm you, but I do like showing, uh, you know, different students who have really learned uh, to capitalize. And, you know, Iggy nailed it. Frank, awesome job uh, making 50% on your money. And what did he do? He risked, you know, 1200 bucks, making nearly, what, 600 So that is an awesome gain on a small account. It does not happen every day. You have to wait for the volatile stocks. You have to play these Sympathy plays well, but I mean, look at the upside here on SHIP. You're basically trying to spot, you know, these stocks that are uptrending pre-market or spiking pre-market, and then at the market open, you can get a big, big squeeze. And this went from 393 to 630. Some of you guys are like, Tim, why don't you buy it and alert it? If I bought it and alert it here, by the time I even finish typing out what I'm thinking, I mean, this is at 9:30 a.m. This is at 9:30. 7 a.m. So you have seven minutes to make $2.40. By the time you read the alert, by the time I write the alert, the play is already half over and I don't want to chase it. So alerts at the open don't really do me or anybody else like you guys very good. I know there are people out there who think that, but I want you to learn and I want you to be self-sufficient. That is the beauty of this. You know, Frank was prepared because he's watched my DVDs. That's what you can do. I'm sorry to sound like a broken record, but I've put together this whole archive of these chart patterns, not for fun, not because I like hearing myself talk, but to help you study the past. Studying the past helps you better be better prepared. Also, here's Damien, uh, made a day's wages in four minutes. <laughs> and he did uh, this with, with uh, OPTT. And this is awesome. And he makes, you know, can't see this. 
He's making 36, 38% on his money. Uh, OPTT is, is a far-fetched DRYS kind of play, but once it breaks the day high right here in the afternoon, 308 all the way up to 570, and this is all in you know 10, 15 minutes. It comes down, but this is great upside, okay? You have to be prepared. And my chat room nailed it, so congrats to those of you who nailed it. Uh, DCIX, I totally forgot about this one. There's so many freaking plays going supernova. This is two to the sevens, and this looks like this can go up uh, a little more tomorrow. So awesome job. This is Riggs, um, and he posts his, his nice little uh, screenshot making 2,600. And he took the meat of the move, not being greedy. Good job, Riggs. And I like your little, your little emojis to block out your account numbers and stuff. Uh, here's Michael made ten bucks a share on DRYS, uh, making you know seven hundred bucks. AAQ made close to seven hundred on SINO. Uh, Shay, I love this tweet, and he says, you know, DRYS. I went against what I always do. I bought the dip and bank profits and achieved my goals. The rules work, and I said, surprise. Good job, Shay. I'm proud of you for trying different strategies. Remember, all of you guys, I'm sharing these students to help inspire you, to show you how many different stocks, how many different angles there are. Right now, the number one pattern is just buying these sympathy plays when they break out to new highs on the day and then trying to hold on for the ride either for 10 minutes or 30 minutes or an hour. That's working best right now. I should mention on GNRT, I really did not want to go long overnight um, I was just afraid that it was going to spike too quickly in the morning. And, and we did get a little spike pre-market. Um, the problem is when the market opened, it, it just dropped. But what did, again, what did I lose? I lost five cents a share, four cents a share, not the end of the world. I would not be holding these stocks long overnight. I think that the main pattern right now is to dip by them near the market open if they show signs of spiking, taking out the day high, getting a lot of volume, maybe having news, maybe the sector is spiking. Um, but for me, the problem right now is my lack of Wi-Fi and lack of sleep. So I'm trying to fit in trades when I can. And that's going to hurt my performance sometimes. But sometimes it'll make my performance. Um, so it's not an exact science. But as I said in the past few video lessons, I think dip buying uh, for morning spikes is the best right now. And, and Shay just nailed it. So good job, Shay. Um, look at Quincy making 50%. Uh, you know, on, on TOPS, I mean, nearly 2000. And he says he's finally getting it. I love seeing when you guys get it. Uh, it takes a little while. Some of you, it takes three months, six months, nine months, 12 months, sometimes 15 or 20 months. Some people take a few years, but eventually it will click. And when you learn to make 50% in a stock in a few minutes, in a few hours, in a few days, you'll realize, wait a minute, there's nowhere else in finance that this happens so consistently. Uh, this is not the first run-up for TOPS, okay? This this is very far from the first run-up from TOPS. I actually made two grand on this one um, a little while ago, one of these spikes, and it spiked for multiple days. This is just the latest, and this was just back in July, okay? You have to look back at former runners and remember them. This one spiked a lot. It's spiking again. OPTT, guess what? Spiked once. Big spike, and now it's spiking again. And it also had some little secondary and, and tertiary spikes. So you got to be aware of all these potential plays. You simply have to study, and you have to simply prepare ahead of time. Look for recent winners. Look for recent percent gainers. Look for low floats right now. Try and figure out what sector is moving. Obviously, right now, it's the shipping sector. What kind of plays right now? Again, it's the low flow plays. And then it's just a question of trying to find plays as they're spiking. You don't have to find them when no one else sees them, okay? GNRT, I learned the lesson where I'm the only one seeing it because I thought, frankly, that every stock in the sector would go up and I chose wrong, you know? I'm not embarrassed to choose wrong. It's not the end of the world. Sometimes that happens. But I want you to think about if you are gonna choose wrong, what is your downside? With GNRT, my downside risk was losing five or 10 cents a share. If I'm wrong shorting a stock like DRYS, I might lose all my money and more because it spikes and it just keeps going. And if you have the mentality where you're just gonna keep averaging up, which many shorts do, that's a very, very dangerous mentality. I don't mind shorting DRYS. I mind when short sellers don't cut losses quickly because they think and they try and reason, oh, the fundamentals think it's gonna go down eventually. Yes, eventually, but when, you know? How long can you stand the pain? And sadly, 
a lot of people can try to stand the pain and maybe it does come back down. I mean, the odds now favor DRYS dropping. So shorts are not on the total wrong track. But what happens if your broker does a margin call and buys you in at the worst point because the broker is also buying in other short sellers? So you're trying to withstand this tsunami, this buying tsunami, and you know, you're know you like chaining yourself to this tree in this weird analogy that's brought on by a lack of sleep. Uh, and you're, you're just like, oh, I can, I can handle this tsunami. It's, it's only going to be one big wave and then it's over. You know, usually if you try to withstand a tsunami and you're on the beach, even if you tie yourself to a tree, the tsunami is just going to crush you. And that's what it's doing to DRYS shorts who try to think that way. So if you are shorting any of these plays, same thing with tops, please be careful. Okay. Shorting is so, so dangerous. And even if it makes logical sense and rational sense, and you can say these companies are all junk, okay, eventually maybe they go to zero. I've seen too many traders blow up. I've seen too many traders have big losses, and I just don't like it because that screws with your confidence, that screws with your mindset. A lot of people stop studying because they're like, oh, this game isn't for me. You know, No different than if you're driving a Ferrari 200 miles an hour in a 35 mile an hour zone, and you crash. And then you're like, oh, I'm never going to drive a Ferrari again. I hate that. It's not the Ferrari's fault. It's your fault for breaking the rules, for going too fast. So if you have a Ferrari, like I do, guess what? It's fun to drive slow. You don't need to drive fast and risk death. Just enjoy it. It's a very enjoyable car to drive. And if you are shorting, guess what? You can cut losses quickly. So I'm not here to tell you that you have to be buying. And I'm not here to tell you that you know shorting is so wrong. I made millions of dollars shorting. But going up against these low float winners day after day and trying to add to your position and risking losing 30, 40, 50, 70, 100% on your money in the process, it's just not good risk reward. And a lot of you guys with small accounts cannot handle that, okay? And I don't want you to handle that. Buying these low float winners is working better right now, especially if you have a small account. Uh, here's Ty. I saw this one, ES ESEA. I totally forgot to even bring this one up. Are you getting a sense of how many plays there are from the ones to the fives in two days now? Um, and my student, um, Ty, nailed it, buying it at 219, selling it at 425, making 94% on his money. Look at him. And look at, look at this guy. He likes his guns. He has his guns. Well, now he can buy better guns because he just made 94% today. Awesome job, Ty. That's an amazing trade. And you're just buying sympathy plays. Here's Ed. He made 15% on SINO. And here's Will. I mean, I have so many more, but I, I have to get going. This is insane. Um, I could spend all day talking about hundreds of, of, of students who are locking in different kinds of profits, whether it's, you know, I don't know what percentage this is, buying at a buck 79, selling it at 215, uh, making 500 bucks. And SINO now is at 280. So don't feel bad, Will. You know, you locked in your $500. And yes, your DVDs, your studying is paying off. You don't feel like, I don't want you to feel like you have to pick the exact bottom and pick the exact top and try to be perfect because perfection is unattainable on these stocks. You try to take the meat of the move on the way up or on the way down. And if you're wrong, cut losses quickly. That is the strategy. And it helps if you're in my chat room. We have over a thousand traders now. A thousand pairs of eyes looking for the next hot stock is better than just your pair of eyes. And if you use stocks to trade, be looking at all the scams. Look at all the different percent gainers. Uh, look at the high of the days on uh, in the morning. You know when you get these morning spikes. And as these stocks keep spiking for one, two, three days, become less aggressive. Um, on the long side. I think that's probably the best piece of advice. You know, too many people are being like so aggressive on day three or day four of the run up. That's when you should be less aggressive because now the odds actually do start to shift to short selling uh, because they, they're not, th these run ups are not sustainable. I don't know if it's going to end today, you know, on, on, uh, on what is, I don't even know what day this is, on Wednesday morning or if it's going to be Thursday or Friday morning. But the end is near for these kinds of run-ups. They're not sustainable. So do me a favor, Longs. Enjoy your gains, but also lock them in along the way. Take profits. Pay yourself along the way. I think that's a good way to be. I know what I teach is not fun, like these lessons where I'm like, pay yourself. Don't bet big. Don't take big losses. But I'm not into fun trading anymore, okay? I'm into safe trading. 
Um, I'm in the teaching business and I want my students to survive and do the best they can and thrive. And that means taking a few hundred dollars here, a few thousand dollars here, learning from everything. Even if you're not trading, I don't want you to feel bad. I, I'm getting some messages from people being like, oh my God, I just started learning. I wish that I was in DRYS. You know, I could have bought a thousand shares here on the breakout over the multi-day high here at 1960 and just held on and made, oh my God, $70,000. Don't think like that, okay? First of all, I don't know anybody who would hold on to this because these kinds of situations, while they can happen, they only happen like a few times a year. So don't feel bad that you think that this is going to happen every day. It's not, especially not to this magnitude and this degree. Um, so if you're not trading or if you're paper trading or if you're just scared of these stocks, which is perfectly acceptable, take pride in the fact that you're witnessing it and learning from it. And you're seeing, I want you to you know, really understand how you're feeling at different times where you, you know, we, we all feel the same kind of stuff, like where you, you get excited, but then you feel anger if you miss it or if you lose, and then you, you want revenge. Really try to take notes on what you're feeling every single day, every single minute, every single hour throughout this supernova, because these supernovas will happen again. Trust me on that. Okay, maybe not five to 100, but I guarantee you there will be another stock that will go from five to 55 or five to 60 or two to 10. And the only question is, are you going to be prepared then? Many of you guys are not prepared for this. I'm not prepared. I'm in totally the, the worst part of the world uh, with, with terrible Wi-Fi. You know, it sucks, but I'm not going to cry about it. I love doing this charity stuff. And frankly, this is, you know, one of my most enjoyable weeks, even though I'm unfortunately missing some of these plays. But I want you to really take notes and be better prepared for next time. You know, now next time, maybe at least some of the short sellers who lose, the good news is they're going to learn. And hopefully they learn from their lessons. That's all you can do. I used to have big short selling losses too. Okay. I primarily used to be a short seller. I've adapted. I've learned how not to take those big losses. Obviously, I'm now a coward trader. And some people don't like that because they're like, you're not a real trader. You, you don't experience these big losses. Trust me. I've experienced these big losses and I share them. You can look back through my past two decades of trades. I've had many, many, many big losers. And only in the last one, two, three years have I learned to cut down on the losses. So I encourage you, I implore you to cut losses quickly because you don't know how high these stocks can go. And, you know, short selling, there's enough bad information out there and it gets a bad enough rap. You don't need to blow up if you cut your losses, if you manage and you accept it. I really think that there's a chance here for you guys to learn something. And those of you who have won it, on it, you know, made 5, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, $60 a share, enjoy it. But don't keep pushing it because this stock will not necessarily keep going. This stock is not going to a thousand, okay? This is far and away best case scenario already. So maybe, maybe it might have one more morning left of spiking or one more day at the most. And then I think that this thing will crater. So I'll be looking to short this. Obviously, finding shares to short is tough. Um, and, you know, these other plays, I would not be aggressive like buying SINO, uh, even though it's, it's closing high and EGLE. I would not be aggressive now. I really think that you need to temper uh, your, your bullishness when these stocks have spiked so far. I don't like chasing stocks. Again, remember, I'm a coward. And I, I say it proudly because I'm going to be a coward shorting. I'm scared of losses, so I cut my losses. And when I buy, I like to buy breakouts and you know be very careful with them. I don't like chasing overextended stocks. I don't like buying stocks that have just doubled in the past few days. That increases your risk. So all I can do is share this message of safety. Hopefully it's making sense. I have truly severe jet lag right now, so I'm not sure. Leave a comment if you're understanding my points here. Um, and you know, I'll try and do better, uh, with my trades and, and I'll try and do better preparing you guys, but all you can do is take it trade by trade and try to manage your risk on every trade. Um, I want all of us to succeed, whether you're long or short. So again, I apologize if I offended anybody, but I want to teach you good rules, safe rules, cowardly rules, because that is what I found has worked. I'll see you guys in the chat room. Thank you very much for your time.